Good evening, church family. Not sure how many of you are going to be joining me on day one. I know this is new, this is unique. We haven't done this for a while, but I'm excited to be journeying with all of you through the book of Philippians over the next 21 days. 21 days of devotion is going to be coming to you right here on our Facebook and other media platforms. We want to engage and connect with you throughout this lockdown time. Don't know how long it's going to be. And even if it ends, we're still going to be journeying together through the book of Philippians. Hey, glad for those who are online. So good to see you. And today is the first installment. We're looking at Philippians chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. And over the next 21 days, different people are going to be sharing a small devotional. We're going to keep it short. We're going to keep it only to about five to six minutes. Um, Just sharing some insights of what we've learned, gleaned as we've been journeying in this book. And I know many of you will have your own insights and thoughts. Please put them in the in, in the chat, share some things that you've been discovering, or even ask a question. Happy to engage. So to start off, let's let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get into Philippians chapter one, verse one to six. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that we can come together and open your word. No matter where we are, no matter what our situation, we can be together in your word. And it's a powerful thing to be journeying through scripture together. So as we do that, we are declaring that no matter what, we're going to be people of the book. We're going to be people that are connecting and sharing and living the word together. Be with us as we do that in Jesus name. Amen. So I threw that little caption in there. Our whole series and this journey together is called No Matter What. Because all through the book of Philippians, we find this little phrase where Paul, determined to be on mission and fulfill what God has called him to do, well, encourages the Philippians and says, Hey guys, no matter what, no matter what happens, no matter what your situation, no matter what your circumstance, we can do what God has called And invited us to do. And so let's get into the book. We're going to be in chapter 1, verse 1 to 6. I'm going to read it and then just share a little thought what jumped out to me as I was journeying through it. So here we go. It says, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and the deacons, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers, I pray for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Hmm. Short six verses, but there's some powerful things in there. And that whole notion, that whole idea of being confident of this, that it was Christ who who started and who will complete the work in us. I could chat for ages about that, but I want to focus on The very first verse, the introduction, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. That little Greek word can also be translated bond servants or slaves of Christ Jesus. Now, I was reflecting on that a bit and going, why? Why does Paul often call himself a slave, a servant? He was this he was this mighty preacher. He was this successful evangelist. He was, you know, honored and favored, invited into the homes of emperors and and powerful people. Yet, why does he call himself and constantly introduce himself as a slave? Well, one reality is he's being humble. Um, That's true. But I think it's more than that. I think he's actually inviting us to maybe understand a little bit about the nature of humanity. You see, 
In other parts, Paul writes this. He says, either we are slaves to sin or we are slaves to righteousness. He's kind of inviting us to understand that we as human beings, we are limited. We we long for, we yearn for freedom and Jesus invites us to freedom. But the freedom that he invites us to is the freedom to choose. The freedom to choose who our master will be. Because as created beings, we do not have life. We do not sustain and, and hold life in ourselves. So we are dependent. And as we recognize that, we then realize that our lives often are given over in devotion. Our lives often are given over in service. Our lives often pay homage to something or someone, regardless whether we're aware of it or not. Some of us are slaves to money. Some of us are slaves to fear. Some of us are slaves to appetites. Some of us are slaves to what people think of us. Some of us are slaves to material things or or consuming. And you see, Paul and Timothy, they understood this. They realized that... Yes, Jesus has set them free. But because Jesus has set them free, they now have a choice. And the choice is, who am I going to bond or attach myself to? There was this, there was this custom in, in the days that Paul was writing. They still had a lot of slaves in their culture. And if a slave was made free or earned their freedom, what often would happen is if the master that the slave was connected to was a kind, caring, loving and benevolent master... The slave would often say, you know what, I don't think my life is going to be any better off but in the home where you are because you are a kind, caring, benevolent master and you care for myself and my family. And so what they would do is they would say, yes, you've set me free, but I am going to bond myself to you in allegiance and loyalty to you and so live a fulfilled and purposeful life. And then they would be called a bond servant. A slightly different relationship, slightly different dynamic. They're not there because they have to be. They're there because they choose to be. And this is what Paul and Timothy are saying. We are slaves of Jesus Christ. We choose this. We have chosen this. We understand that we as human beings are going to worship something or someone. And we choose that to be Jesus. And so here's the point that it got me thinking about. In this season that we're in, what are we spending our time and focus on? What are we spending our energy engaging in? What is consuming our our thoughts? What is consuming our time? Because often, show me what you spend your resource and your time on, and I can tell you what you value. I can tell you what you worship. And so here, this is why I believe this is a message for us. In this season with with many different things going on, I found my time being consumed by news headlines, by the next article about what is happening in in the whole corona world. And more and more, I've had to realize, actually, Norman, you need to spend your time in the Word. You need to spend your time focusing on Jesus. If you say that He is that you have attached yourself to him and he is your Lord, then maybe demonstrate that with your time, your resource, and your energy. And so I couldn't get past verse 1, and and that was the devotional thought that I wanted to share with all of you tonight. And I'm excited to continue this journey through Philippians and like Paul and his encouragement to the Philippian church, say, you know what, no matter what, No matter what, we're going to be devoted, we're going to be on mission, and we're going to be in the Word. And we are going to be slaves of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this powerful little letter. Thank you for the encouragement that we find in it. But thank you for the reminder of what matters. Thank you for the reminder of what we need to spend our energy, our time, and our focus on. And thank you 
that you've given us this word to guide and lead us in every season. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to be coming to you 7 p.m. over the next 21 days as we journey through the book of Philippians and discover more about what Paul meant when he would say that awesome phrase, hey, no matter what. And we're going to invite all of you to that same challenge, to live as disciples, no matter what. God bless. See you tomorrow.